One of the worst things you can commit as a software developer is, well, probably a really bad crime. Don't do any of those. When it comes to code, however, the worst thing you can commit there is a secret. Whilst most of us know that committing secrets is a big no-no, unfortunately, it still happens quite a lot. In fact, according to Git Guardian, over 10 million new secrets were detected in public GitHub commits in 2022. Therefore, it's happening much more than we'd like to admit. So, in this video, let's take a look at what we can do when we accidentally commit a secret, and how we can prevent them from being committed in the first place. To begin, let's look at how we can actually detect committed secrets in our code. There are a number of different tools out there that can be used for leaked secret detection, but the one I really like is an open source tool called Git Leaks. Git Leaks allows you to scan your entire GitHub repository for any hard-coded secrets, such as passwords, API keys, and tokens. Let's install it on our system and take a look at how it works. Because I'm using Arch, by the way, I can install Git Leaks using Pac-Man. Once installed, I can then navigate over to my code base and scan it using the Git Leaks Detect command, which finds two leaks inside of my 15 commits. By default, the Detect command doesn't give us much information. If we run the command again using the dash V flag, however, this time we're provided a lot more information about the leaks. The first of which is a token for accessing Slack, which has been detected in the file notify slash Slack on line 11. The output also gives us some further information about the commit where this leak was first detected, such as the commit hash, the commit author, and the date. The second leak was an arbitrary cache password found in the file app.go, which was detected in a different commit hash. What's interesting about this secret is it was actually resolved in a later commit, and is no longer present inside of our current git head. However, the password still exists inside of the git history, which means it has leaked. As you can tell, using a tool such as Git Leaks is really useful for detecting committed secrets in your codebase. The tool itself provides a number of other features and also integrates with CI/CD such as GitHub Actions, which can enable you to automate the detection of leaked secrets. If you're interested more in Git Leaks, then let me know in the comments down below and I'll dedicate a whole video to it. Now that we know which secrets have been committed, let's go ahead and resolve them. The next course of action depends on whether your secrets have only been committed locally or have been pushed to a remote repository. Let's begin with the local only scenario first, which fortunately is a lot easier to resolve. To demonstrate this, we'll use the same repo that we detected our committed secrets in before. Let's begin by resolving the Slack token, which was added in the most recent commit. You'll notice that the commit containing our cache password is much further down. We'll look at how to resolve this in a minute. Additionally, all of these commits are local only, meaning they haven't been pushed to any remote branch. For both of these committed secrets, the goal is to edit the commit where they were both added, removing the secret from each one. Because the Slack token is in the most recent commit, we can use the git reset command with the dash dash soft flag. Passing in the commit, we want to reset our branch too. In this case, we're passing in the head with a tilde one, where the head is the most recent commit in our branch, and the tilde symbol meaning to go backwards n number of times, in our case, backwards by one. This means we're resetting our branch to the commit before our current head, basically removing the last commit. Now, if I run git log, you can see that our previous head no longer exists. However, when I run git status, you can see that we have some changes to be committed. This is because we reset with the soft flag, which will add any reset commits onto our staged changes. If I run git diff using the staged flag, you can see that this is the case. This means we're now able to edit this code and remove our hard-coded secret. With the token removed, we can now save and close this file. If we check the status of our code using git status, you can see that we now have unstaged changes we need to add, which we can do using the git add command. Then, once all of the changes have been staged, we can go ahead and commit our code as we would do before. Now, when I run the git leaks detect command, searching only for the Slack token, you can see we no longer have a leak. Now that we've managed to resolve our committed Slack token, the next secret we want to remove is our cached password. However, because this is found much deeper in our commit history, using git reset dash dash soft isn't a good idea, as it will reset all of the commits above it. Instead, we can use the interactive git rebase which can be used to edit individual commits inside of our Git history. Just a quick word of warning before we begin. You should only rewrite your Git history on commits that haven't been pushed to the main branch of your remote repo, as doing so is a really bad idea in most cases. We'll take a look at why this is a bad idea and why it doesn't work for remote repos shortly. But keep this in mind that you should only do this if the commits are local only. 
To begin, we need to obtain the commit hash where this password was added, which we can do using git leaks. You can also do this using something like git blame as well. With our commit hash copied to our clipboard, we can then perform an interactive rebase using the following git rebase command, passing in the dash i flag, which stands for interactive. Next, we're specifying the commit hash we want to rebase from, which in our case is the commit before we added in our hard-coded cache password. This is achieved by passing in that commit hash with the tilde one appended to it. If we go ahead and run this command, it will open up our configured text editor, with a list of all of the commits up to the one you passed in. Here, you're able to specify a number of different actions you want to take on each commit, with the default one being pick, which basically means leaving the commit as is. In our case, we want to edit the topmost commit, which is the hash we identified earlier. We can do this by changing the pick command to E or edit. Once you save and exit this file, you'll enter into rebase mode, which will allow us to edit our problematic commit. Now we can open up the file in our text editor and remove the leaked secret. Upon doing so, you can then save and close the file. In order to continue rebasing, you'll first need to stage the changes using the git add command. Then you can call git rebase with the dash dash continue flag. This will open up another text editor, allowing you to change the commit message if you so desire. If everything looks good, go ahead and save and close this window, and the rebase should continue, applying all of the picked commits on top of our changes. If you're lucky, then all of the commits should apply without any issue. However, it's also likely that you may encounter a merge conflict, such as what we have here. You'll want to handle this as you would any typical conflict. First, by resolving the conflicts, which in my case, I'm going to choose the os.gitenv implementation. Then by using the git add command, followed by git rebase dash dash continue. Because this was the only conflict, then the rebase command manages to finish and complete without any further issue. Now, if I go ahead and run the git leaks detect command again, you'll see that git leaks no longer detects any committed secrets inside of our branches. One thing to be aware of, however, is that the commits containing the hard-coded secrets still exist inside of the git repository. However, they can only really be accessed if you already know the commit hash, or if you use something like git reflog. By default, these commits should be garbage collected after 90 days, provided they have no references pointing to them, such as a branch or a tag. Unfortunately, however, this behavior also exists when it comes to remote repositories, which is why rewriting commits only works if the commits have yet to be pushed to a remote repo. If you're the only contributor to a remote repo, and the repo is either self-hosted or private, then you might be able to get away with a force push. Although this can be a rather destructive action, and these commits will still be accessible until they are garbage collected. To show what I mean, I've set up a remote repository, which has our original main branch with the commits containing our hard-coded secrets. I'm going to go ahead and update this branch using the force with lease flag. Before I continue, just a little disclaimer. Don't do this at home. Force pushing your main branch is usually a bad idea, so please don't do this unless you know what you're doing. In our case, we're doing this to show that it doesn't work for resolving secrets. For example, if I now use the following git fetch command, I can pull down the commit containing our hard-coded cache password into another branch called bad commit. Then if I check out this branch and run the following command to search for the cache password, you can see the hard-coded value still exists. Therefore, if the remote repository is able to be accessed by anyone else, or even worse, it's a public repo, then those secrets should be considered compromised and the course of action is going to be rather different. Typically, the first step in this situation is to perform an investigation, which is used to understand the severity of the leak. Determining things such as the services that have been affected, whether or not the secret has been used in an unauthorized way, and the level of permissions associated with it. Additionally, if the leaked credential is part of a company's code base, then there may be additional steps or actions that need to take place according to that company's policies. Although personally, I haven't seen many companies have a policy in place for a leaked secret. Typically, when an investigation is concluded, the next step is to rotate the secret, which can either be done with or without downtime. This decision on whether or not to incur downtime usually comes off the back of the results of the investigation. If the severity of the leak isn't too bad, then downtime can be avoided. However, if the leaked permission has god mode or is being actively used, then downtime may be preferred. Again, this is going to vary case by case. However, to perform a rotation without downtime usually takes three steps. The first step is to generate a new secret with the same permissions as the leaked credential. Then it's a case of redeploying the affected services, making use of the new credential in a secure manner, which we'll talk more about in a minute. 
Then, once it's been confirmed that everything is working as expected and making use of the new secret, the old one is subsequently removed. Despite the secret being resolved, it will still remain inside of the Git history, which can cause tools such as Git leaks to report false positives. Fortunately, Git leaks provides a solution to this through its baseline features, which allows you to prevent any leaks created before the baseline from being reported. After the secret has been rotated and the incident is resolved, it's usually a good idea to perform a blameless post-mortem. This is done to better understand how the mistake was made and how to prevent it in the future. Typically, the best way to prevent hard-coded secrets is to only pass them into your application at runtime either through the use of environment variables or at runtime using a secret manager. My personal preference is to use environment variables, as they're a common interface that should be supported by secret managers as well. Additionally, whilst working locally, you can make use of a .env file, which enables you to pass in secrets without them being committed into your Git repository. Let's go ahead and set this up for our current project. To begin, let's first create a new file called .env. The next and most important step is to make sure you add this file into your gitignore, which will prevent the file from being committed. You can test this out by typing in the git status command and ensuring that the .env file is not inside of your untracked changes. Here's a quick before and after. Next, now that you've ensured your .env file won't be committed, you can go ahead and add in your secrets as follows, specifying a well-named environment variable for each one with the value afterwards. In my case, I'm setting the Slack token and the cache password. Next, we want to make sure our .env file is loaded when our application starts. Pretty much every popular programming language should have a package available to achieve this. For Node.js, there is the .env package. For Rust, the .env crate. And in Go, my personal favorite is joho slash go.env. Let's go ahead and add this to our project. Then to use it, all we need to do is call the load function of the go.env package inside of our main function. All that remains now is to make sure to load our secrets from the environment variables. And with that, we have access to secrets in our development environment without hard coding them into our code base. Just make sure to not log out these environment variables as this can be another common cause of leaked secrets. Another method of prevention you may want to consider is adding in automation to prevent these secrets from being committed in the first place. This can be achieved using something such as a pre-commit hook, which will prevent you from committing your code if a secret is detected. However, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of pre-commit hooks, and I believe having good hygiene when it comes to secrets is going to be more advantageous. Part of this hygiene is using good practices such as .env files, although even then, I do think they have some shortcomings. Fortunately, there's a number of different solutions out there to make working with secrets even more powerful, but that's a video for another time. I want to give a big thank you to my newest channel members, De Tim and Chris1. Thank you both for supporting the channel and helping to bring my content to hundreds of thousands of people around the world.